Hello everyone, I'm JG and welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm bringing you guys a brand new track review video. We're going to talk about and review some recently released songs I happen to hear and have some opinions on. It's been a good long while since I've done one of these videos. It's been about a month. And the reason why I haven't done one of these isn't because there's been a shortage of songs that I've heard and wanted to talk about, far from it in fact. The reason why it's been such a long time since I've done one of these videos is because there was just so much music that came out in October, particularly albums that I wanted to hear and review. So instead of listening to new tracks and making videos talking about those tracks, I was making more album reviews than usual. So uh, yeah, that's why I haven't done one of these in a while. In fact, there's still albums released from back in October that I still haven't gotten around to listening to yet and giving my full thoughts on. I'm hoping to get those out and catch up reviews sometime before the year ends. But uh, yeah, basically October was a very busy month uh, as far as album releases go, and that's why it's been a while since I've done one of these, but we're here, we're back to do another one, because there are some songs that were dropped in the past few weeks or so that I did want to talk about for one reason or another. So starting off, we're going to talk about the newest track from Mike Shinoda, Fine. I'm a pretty big fan of Linkin Park and Mike Shinoda by extension, so I was interested in checking out this track, of course, and overall, I think this is a pretty okay song. It didn't really blow me away or anything, but I don't think it's bad either necessarily. Stylistically, this reminds me a lot of some of the things that were being toyed around with on Mike's album that came out last year, Post Traumatic. I feel like his whole delivery here on this track is kind of reminiscent of some of the deliveries he gave on that record. Instrumentally, there is a bit of a similarity too, though I will say that the instrumental to this track is a bit noisier, it is a bit harsher, it's not quite the same as post-traumatic, but I feel like if Mike was going to make another album just under his own name, like another solo record, I could see it sounding kind of like this track maybe. This song is going to be appearing on the soundtrack for a film, which I forgot the name, I'll try to put it up on screen if I remember. So this isn't going to be on a studio album, or at least it hasn't been announced that it's going to be on a studio album at some point in the future, but if he was to make another studio album, maybe it could sound like this song. It's not too far removed from the sound that was on Post Traumatic, but at the same time, it is kind of its own thing. There are some aspects of this track that I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not a big fan of the kind of noisy uh, drop that comes in on this track. It just feels kind of typical, and it's just not the most memorable kind of drop I've heard, really, or anything like that. And Mike's hook here on the track that precedes this drop really isn't anything all that special either, in my opinion. It just kind of feels like another instance of a song kind of giving a pretty flaccid, unmemorable hook and then kind of filling that void that you get from losing a pretty memorable chorus with this big drop that just really isn't all that memorable, like I said before. It's not super interesting either. I feel like Mike's vocals on the rest of the track, his lyrics on the rest of the track, and the instrumental on a lot of the other parts of the song are just a lot better than what you get here during this song's hook. Uh, but still, even despite that complaint, I think this is still a pretty decent song. There's not too many complaints uh, that I have outside of that one, even if it does detract a fair bit from my enjoyment of this song. If you're a fan of Mike, if you're a fan of Linkin Park, especially if you like Post Traumatic, I would give this song a listen. Though, if you didn't care for any of those things I mentioned previously, I don't see why this song would necessarily appeal to you. Moving on, the next track that I want to talk about is the newest single from Creeper, Born Cold. This is the first piece of new music that we're really getting from the group uh, since the release of their 2017 record that I really enjoyed. Uh, and I'm guessing this is going to be a single from their upcoming second album. So I was pretty excited coming into this thing, but overall I'm kind of disappointed by this song in some regards. There's aspects to this track that I think are pretty good, but uh, probably my biggest complaint with this track is that the production on this thing is pretty terrible, which isn't inherently a bad thing, I guess, but the style of pop punk that the band makes, I could see a rougher production working compared to what they were doing on that first record, but the way that they execute here in this song just uh, doesn't really work, in my opinion. I feel like nothing comes together in a way uh, where everything is working to each other's benefit. In fact, a lot of times it sounds like this rough mix is working against a lot of what this track has going for it, most notably during the hook of this song, which I feel it could be a really catchy, memorable hook. Things just sound really wonky in the mix, I guess. 
Like the vocals at times just sound way too loud, especially when the vocals are trying to go into a higher register. It just sounds really distracting, and the instrumental to this track overall just really does not have a ton of weight to it, particularly the guitars. It all just feels so frail, and it just doesn't come together in a satisfying manner, I guess. I went back to the band's debut record and listened to some tracks, and a lot of the songs on that project just feel a lot fuller, a lot better put together compared to this song, and uh, yeah, it's kind of disappointing in that regard that this track has some really solid things going for it, but this mix kind of gets in the way of me fully enjoying that. That said, there are tracks, there are aspects of this track that I do enjoy, like I said before. The hook to this thing, I do think is somewhat catchy. I think it's kind of ruined to some extent by the mix here, but I could see it working and I could see what the band was going for here on this thing. I think it's just uh, still decent enough, I guess. The performance during the verses, I think, overall is pretty solid. The lyrics here on this track are pretty nice, too. Overall, I think this is a pretty average song. I think there's a lot more potential in this thing than what you actually get with the final product, which is kind of disappointing, but, uh, yeah, that's all there really is to it, I guess. If you're a fan of the band, I would say give this a listen, but uh, if you're not, I think they have better material in their back catalog that's worth checking out more than this song. Moving on, the next track that I want to talk about is this new single from Bring Me the Horizon, Ludens, and this song is coming from the soundtrack for the new video game Death Stranding, which is a game that I have not played and I know pretty much nothing about, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because apparently in the lyrics of this track there are some allusions made to stuff in the game itself, so I will admit that when it comes to analyzing the lyrics of this track, I can't uh, give you know the most in-depth analysis because I haven't played the game, that's just how it is, I don't really have time to play many video games, and when I do it's usually just screwing around with Doom or something, but I am a Bring Me The Horizon fan, uh, so I decided to check this track out, and overall I think it's pretty enjoyable, I think it's a decent track. Again, it's not a track that blew me away necessarily, but I still think that there's enough to like in this track to where you know I could see myself possibly revisiting this thing in the future. Stylistically, this song pulls from a lot of different sounds and influences, and throughout its runtime has several different switch-ups and changes. I feel like the band really pulls a lot from uh, different elements of their past 30 records on this thing. You'll have some pretty clearly defined electronic influence moments here on this thing. You'll have a really catchy pop hook mixed in here as well. But at the same time, you'll have some heavier aggressive vocals come in at times too, and you'll have a heavy breakdown that pops up towards the end of this track as well. It's a really odd uh, mixture. It comes together a bit better than you might expect, honestly. In a lot of regards, it feels like the band just kind of mushed together different elements of their past three records into this one new track that sounds reminiscent at times of those three records in different regards, but at the same time kind of sounds like its own unique thing too. I will say that there are certain elements of this track that don't work quite as nicely for me, most notably some of the more quiet moments mixed into this track during the various sound change-ups just don't really hit quite as hard as some of the louder, more aggressive moments or some of the catchier, poppier moments that are mixed into this song. But overall, I still think this is a pretty decent track. Stylistically, I think it's pretty interesting. I think it's a fair bit more interesting than a good majority of the stuff that was on the band's last full-length release. But at the same time, I could easily see this kind of slipping into the track list of that album too, to some extent. I, you know, it's just a decent song in my opinion. I don't think it's one of the band's best or anything, but still pretty enjoyable. I'd recommend it. Next up, I'm going to be talking about this new track from Panic at the Disco, Into the Unknown. This is coming off the soundtrack for Frozen 2, and I just realized there's a lot of songs I'm talking about today that are coming from different soundtracks, and I have not seen or played any of the uh, source material for any of these material. I haven't even seen the first Frozen movie, but I like Panic at the Disco, so I checked this track out. And overall, uh, I don't really care for this track all too much. It reminds me a lot of a lot of the worst aspects of the band's last full-length release, which I didn't already care for to begin with, but this kind of takes some of those aspects and exaggerates them even further. Uh, when it comes to positives with this song, I will say Brendan Urie's vocal performance here on this track is pretty great. Overall, I think he's a really great vocalist, and he definitely showcases his great vocal ability here on this song. It's just, you know, everything else about this song just does absolutely nothing for me. The sound of this thing is just so bland and dull. I mean, I know it's appearing on the soundtrack for a kid's 
film, uh, and in that regard, it can't be super out there or weird or anything like that. But even by the standards of you know music for kids films, this is pretty bland and by the numbers. The instrumental here to this track is so bland and unmemorable that I have a hard time recalling what it even sounds like. Uh, the lyrics here to this track, once again, are pretty generic, pretty bland, obviously just put together, I guess, to maybe reflect some of the themes in the film. Maybe I'm guessing, once again, I haven't seen the film or its prequel, so I can't say anything on that regard, but I'm guessing it has some sort of parallel with the movie, especially if the song is being promoted as heavily as it is. But uh, that aside, the lyrics to this track are just so bland and vague and generic that they can just really apply to any number of situations. It's obvious that it's kind of put together to loosely tie in with some movie and that you're just kind of supposed to fill in the blanks possibly with uh, different stuff from the movie itself which I guess they're expecting you to watch too and while the vocals here on this track are pretty nice like I said before uh, the actual hook to this track and a lot of the way the vocals come together just isn't the most interesting in my opinion the hook at times can even sound kind of annoying to me even if the vocals behind them are pretty nice I don't know it's just the mixture of the really bland instrumental with the bland lyrics with the obvious, catchy, really over-the-top hook that is supposed to be really theatric and stick with you, it just doesn't come together in my opinion because for as much as Brendan is really trying to sell this track, there's just like nothing to sell here. The song is so bland and by the numbers that there's absolutely nothing to really take away from this thing. So yeah, I didn't like this track really at all outside of the vocals, but then again, I just listened to any number of other Panic at the Disco songs where uh, the, every other element of the song is better than this track because believe me there are plenty of Panic songs that would fall into that category. So yeah, unless you're like a really diehard fan of Panic at the Disco or you're like a diehard Frozen fan or something, uh, I would probably say to avoid this song. Moving on, the final song I want to talk about today is the newest track from Big Crit. Battle of the Bass, my sub 5. This is the newest addition to his My Sub series of tracks, and I was looking forward to it quite a bit because I like this series of songs, and even if I wasn't the biggest fan of the album he dropped a few months back, I was hoping this song was maybe going to be a bit more interesting, and uh, I was going to like it more. And overall, I do like it a fair bit more than the majority of the tracks that popped up on Crit is here. There are some aspects of this song that I'm not the biggest fan of still. I do think that the instrumental in the first part of this track isn't as memorable as I was hoping that it would be, though at least after the beat switch up that comes on later on in this song it becomes a bit more lively and entertaining and memorable. I also think that Big Crit's flow here on this song is great as well. Pretty interesting, pretty energetic and lively too, even though this song is trying to go for a bit of a slower uh, sound, almost ballad-like in a sense. Uh, I still get a lot of energy and passion from his delivery here on this track, which is really nice to see. When it comes to how Crit takes this track and is able to pull off this slower, ballad-like sound during the course of its runtime, it's just really cool how this was done, and I still think that the track has a lot of really interesting character and personality to it, despite uh, this song structure that is kind of odd and different from what you might expect. I think that this track is pretty entertaining. I wish it actually was on Crit Is Here, as that would have just been another moment on that record that was actually entertaining to some extent. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty enjoyable track, uh, in my opinion. Not one of the best Big Crit songs necessarily or anything. It still does, you know, pale in comparison to a track like My Sub 4, just because that song was so awesome, I guess, for lack of a better word. Whereas this song is interesting still, but not quite as great. If you're a Big Crit fan, though, you definitely have to check this track out. A fair bit more interesting than the majority of what was on his last record, or even that trilogy of EPs that he dropped last year as well. So just, just a pretty solid track through and through. And with that said, that concludes all of the tracks I wanted to talk about here today. If you happen to have any opinions on these songs that are different than my own, that's perfectly fine. In fact, feel free to leave your own thoughts on these songs in the comment section down below. And while you're down there, make sure you also leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel for more music-related content. Things like album reviews, track reviews, things of that sort. If you enjoy that kind of content, make sure you subscribe. Hopefully I have another one of these track review videos out in a time shorter than you know a month from now. But uh, hopefully I should be back to at least uh, once every two weeks doing one of these videos. And uh, yeah, that's really all I have to say on the matter for today's video. Thanks again for watching, 
and stay golden.